السلام علیکم سیدی وعلیکم السلام و رحمت اللہ سیدی does the use of human skull as a profile image attract negative energies should those who use it be advised to desist use of a human skull why would they use a human skull in a profile picture you know the 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 the, the The best example of being a good student because this is a school, this is not for that only that person. When I answer I don't mean to try to make… put anybody on the spot because our talks are for everyone and always for myself first. Is that the best student on this path is the one whom observes, means they don't need to be told. The, the one who continuously has to be told something, it's not doing it right. The one whom observes and their observation is keen and sincere, they can pick up. So they're, they're, they were always looking, we were always looking that what was the best way to, to follow was to follow the shaykh. Oh he has turban, I'm going to get turban, he does like this prayers, I'm going to do those prayers. His character like this. So everything was by example of following the shaykh and that's why I had a shaykh. If I wanted to figure things out for myself I wouldn't have gotten a shaykh. Means if I wanted to like piece things together, I wonder what I should do, oh okay I'll, I'll go like two weeks and find this. It would take a lifetime because I was in a need that, what am I supposed to recite? How am I going to reach to where I want to reach? I'm going to wait five years before I decide, oh I need a siwak because I came across that in a random hadith reading or I need this or I need to do that. So the concept is then Allah guided the heart that, I want you to follow this shaykh and put within the heart that, don't think. You already know when you thought what kind of problems this world opened up for you. So we understood, لَيْلَا أَنْتَ سُبْحَانِكَ إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ Ya Rabbi don't leave me to myself, I know the, what I'm capable of getting in danger of. So I didn't need to prove and I need to keep testing and see who, who this person is, I didn't want… Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs. Please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. To be with myself, I didn't want to listen to myself, I wanted to rely on the guidance and as a result we followed. Look what he's doing, we did, we looked at the character they had, we tried our best to follow. So in our lives we followed. And then we found, oh well this was the example of the holy companions. You know that if Prophet took a path and walked, the holy companions took the exact walk. If he went around a rock, they went around a rock. Why? Because later we found, oh they had an immense yaqeen, means all and everywhere that Prophet went, they had such a yaqeen they could see the light of his footsteps and they stepped on those lights and moved. But until that state opens by example of ihtiba and, and ta ta wajib al taqlid in Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah, it's wajib for taqlid to follow. So we don't follow ourselves and follow my nafs and wait 10 years of following the shaykh until I finally one day decide I'm going to you know, hand it over and, and stop driving my own vehicle. 
it was quick in our lives. We didn't want to, we knew that when we drove it was big problems. So we immediately released that and went into submission to follow. So in our lives that answers everything. So look to what the shaykh is doing and put your profile similar. Means he has a copy of his shaykh, you put a picture of your shaykh. Put all the things that he's doing, he's already giving by example. So there's no need to see, you know, can I put a vampire on my profile picture, can, can I put a giraffe on my profile? You can do whatever you want but do you see your shaykh doing that? No. So why you don't follow the tariqah and say, look I'm going to follow this shaykh, I'm going to follow what he does. Not put his pictures of his shaykh but you put your picture of your shaykh because he's doing something to, to, to raise the status of his shaykhs and his connections with his shaykhs. Not to raise the status but to, to what's the word, to show an, an honour and tashrif and, and reverence for them. At the same time the students should show reverence for their shaykh, not above their shaykh but their shaykh and propagate the teaching of their shaykh. And that's our life, we propagated the teachings of our shaykh, we propagated everywhere. Whatever knowledge came out we were the first to propagate it, then we developed the website with you know hundreds of thousands of views, thousands of people come every day new to the site and that was the propagation of, of that reality. That's what we're calling on the students to do now is to take the images, crop them, put them out in social media, put the videos out on social media, propagate the knowledges. These are the fruits that you feel are blessed, if you don't think they're blessed you should go somewhere else and follow something else. But if you do feel that these are of a value to you and these are Muhammadan haqqaiqs, take them, share them, make an account and post it everywhere. Take the images, post it everywhere, take the articles, post it everywhere. Now we're in Mawlid and Nabi Wasallam's mode, take the images of the milad on the charity in Pakistan, post them all over social media. That Here's the milad, come to our milad, here's the milad, support milad. All of these things that you see the shaykh and his organization is doing, you do the same on an individual basis. Take the accounts and begin to propagate them. When you follow by example then you're most likely going to be successful like the shaykh is successful. So that's, that's the reason to take a guide. Is, is not to try to wing it and do it yourself and can we do this and we have people even ask, can we shorten the, the awrah, can we, can we recite this instead of this surah? Well why would you want to change what the Sultan and awliya gave and most likely got and received directly from Sayyidina Muhammad means why you want to drive? If you thought you could drive then you should be on your own path and go driving. But this is a path for people who wish to surrender and they're tired. If you're not tired yet keep going and come back next year. And those whom are tired means they, they're finished, they don't want it anymore, they don't want to try to figure it out, they want to just taslim and submit. As a result of submission they feel very good, they, they rest at night because we tried our best Ya Rabbi. We, we followed the example and this ishq and love of Sayyidina Muhammad and we did our best. So alhamdulillah it, it gives a tranquility and uh, gives a, a softness to the heart, tranquility in the heart and begin to open a yaqeen that, I want to follow this individual, do what this individual does, do as he's done and uh, propagate that love, propagate the, the ishq and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and a very strong love for Ahlul Bayt so that uh, this is important especially in these times and in these very, very difficult times of what's opening upon the earth. So alhamdulillah is the, the path is very easy so we don't have to make it hard, inshaAllah. Mm, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Thank you for everything. Uh, is the nafs the same as a qarin? It feels like a completely different entity separate from us when meditating at times. No, the jinn is something different, the nafs is something different. Yeah, that the, the nafs is a, is a creature from hell and he partners with shaitan which is the qarin that 
is assigned to every human being has a has a, a jinn attached to them and Allah gave we said is the regulator. And that creature is intention to bring the energy of insan down and the one whom partners with him is the nafs, nafsa mara. So the nafs amara and shaitan becomes shariq, there's no shariq with Allah, you're not even anywhere near there to, to establish that. So la shariq is means that don't let your nafs become partner with shaitan to destroy your soul. Already the soul is in difficulty by being inside of the physicality. So then when we understood these different creatures then we understand that the shaitan is, is, is making a partner with the, the nafs and two of them are coming inside and making a fire within me and bad character within me and terrorizing my soul. So that becomes the great struggle and, and the, the great difficulty. So the only way to come against that is the zikr, the prayers, all the practices we talked about but the strongest is the meditation. As soon as we make the muraqaba, there's now a fourth person. So you have the person, their soul, their nafs and shaitan and these three are trying to battle but why don't we introduce the fourth one. The fourth one is then the shaykh, as soon as you ask for the madan, the soul and the presence of the shaykh is present at that time in that association. So now the fight is more even because the soul and the shaykh will team up and begin to burn the nafs and shaitan. So that's why meditation is so powerful and Naqshbandi meditation when it's completely with madad. We don't meditate without madad, we don't meditate by ourselves because then it's two of them against you in, in isolation where they begin to slap you around very bad. It's a very bad wrestling match when you meditate by yourself, right? Because there's three people, it's your nafs, shaitan and your soul. So when you sit to meditate by yourself, the nafs and shaitan is coming and, and beating the person, making hallucinations and all sorts of uh, whatever they do to, to make whisperings and, and everything hallucinating. And that's why these new age people they are schizophrenic and hallucinate. They have, oh my spiritual guide is coming to me, what are you talking about spiritual guide? You can't see anything, that's the devil that's doing that, they're sending lights and beatific colors, it's a shaitan. This is a very bad nefarious creature. That's why you have to in, in you have to introduce an element of truth which is the soul of the shaykh so that this wrestling match becomes much more even, much more balanced. As soon as you sit to connect to make this energy and fight these bad characters is I ask for the madad of the shaykh and I read the, the madad which is the chain of the shaykhs asking for their nazar and for my shaykh to be present and visualize his presence right in front of me. Well then it's much more than even because the madad of the shaykh comes with an extreme amount of energy and as a result that energy comes and then begin to burn those two other creatures and begin to send an energy upon the soul of the person so that it's no longer a fight after a few times of meditating they don't even come to fight, they run, they run as soon as the, the presence of the shaykh is, is coming in the meditation. Then they can just sit there and begin to absorb all the excess energies until the soul is becoming so powerful from the light and the energy and that it's always in the presence of the shaykh. Then it's always the soul with the shaykh and the nafs is running and the shaitan of the person is running even further. Then they can leave nafsa amara. Nafs amara is when it's just the three and the two guys are beating up the soul. One whom is meditating <coughs> is not nafs amara because the shaykh is there, there's no more amara. Now he's lawama like shawarma, we gave the talks on the levels of, of the, the soul's progression. Now the shaykh is, is influencing the person what is right and wrong. And as a result there's more light coming and taming that devil not to cooperate with shaitan. And as they're progressing, so nafs al mutma'ayna is what? Is the nafs that no longer with shaitan but is with the soul. And that nafs has been tamed 
to be like a buraq and does not deal with the shaitan and does not partner with the shaitan becomes the buraq of that soul. That way that nafs now will carry that servant into their worshipness, their ibadah and grant them a himmah because now they're not battling that inner battle, <coughs> they have reached a state of of mutma'in which would be like certainty. So that conflict has to end and then at higher levels their nafs is a buraq for them. And we gave example, everybody nafs becomes a buraq in Ramadan, right? In Ramadan the, and you're committed, you said, that's it, it's Ramadan, I don't care if I ha I'm going to die in the middle of Ramadan, we are doing Ramadan. When the nafs understands, no this guy's serious, he's not going to break Ramadan, then he starts to work for you. Wake you up at 3 o'clock, eat, hurry up eat, we're hungry, we're going to be hungry all day. Then they see how their nafs actually encourages them to eat on time, to get the food they need to get, get the nourishments because it's going to be very hard on the nafs if they, if they have to go for 24 hours of no food. So everyone sees in Ramadan the ability of the nafs to support them. And that's what Allah wants that your nafs if you fight it will tip and become like a buraq for you to carry you into your worshipness and service to Allah inshaAllah. <coughs> but that's with evening the, the battle and the evening of the battle is the madad. So in Lord of the Rings what was that? When they were fighting all these orcs and all of a sudden from the mountain the shaykh came down with the horse and began to… the mere presence of the shaykh and all the lights that burned the devils, they're either, if they're going to stay in that light they're going to be burned to death. So they don't stay in that light, they have to flee. So as a result of fleeing as the shaykh is moving these creatures are running because the truth and false doesn't stay in the same and the frequency of false is zahukan. Allah made it with an inability to withstand the light. So that's why the vampire movies are showing you, the vampire can't go in the sun, they can't go in the light, they burn in the light. And that's the shaitans and the nefarious creatures, they cannot stand in that presence and begin to fight the light, they fight, can't fight the sun. So as a result by bringing that madad that light comes and begins now to push away all these negative characteristics and negative energies inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam When reciting from the handbook against black magic, is it advisable to do it gradually? The, the handbook that we have, I think it's on the app and on the Muhammadan way, no you can recite that daily. So that's a, that basically the madad and ayatul kursi and that those are very powerful just for having the madad and building of one's energy. So we call it the fighting of black magic, in essence it's the building of your own energy. Because once you build the energy, make the madad like we just talked about, the shaykh's light is luminous light like fire that comes all around the servant. Lost connection? No. Oh, we're back? Everything is good, yeah. Oh, okay, the camera went out. <laughs> so like we see that light that comes, it knocks everything out and that's the importance. So reciting that every day for people whom have hasad and, and all sorts of things that are not, not very comfortable around them, we recite that booklet every day, every day, every day and recite it out loud and in a room and you want to bring that energy and that environment all around the person inshaAllah. That's on the app, it's called the book against evilness I think and then that's also I think on the Nur Muhammad website under the du'as, it's a book against evilness. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Someone had a question about that, they were asking, is it okay if we let the shaykh uh, recite it through audio or is it better to recite it ourselves? No, hearing it is one thing, we have ayatul kursi that you run on a loop within the house and playing talala khirat, all of these 
you put on a loop, put on a wireless speakers, however your sound systems are designed within the house, or on a television, on YouTube, whatever your, your data programs are. Those are for the barakah of the house and a cleansing of the house. But the one who recites themselves, they feel an energy within themselves moving. So that can't be duplicated. When you recite yourself, it's your tongue, your heart and written on your book. Hearing it is to cleanse an energy for, for the area. You reciting it, it's like putting a fire within yourself. One is like spraying the house with the fumigation against bad things, the other one is lighting the fire within your own heart. That can't be compared. So when you light the fire within your own heart, your luminous being becomes very powerful from these recitations because we talked about that in the realities of sound. Every sound that you make is important to raise on your frequencies. So like the zikr, you're making the zikr while listening to the zikr. So you're making the zikr khafi, doing the zikr, doing the practices as the zikr is being played, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa uh, does, does nasal inhalers affect our breath? Nasal inhalers affect your breath. I think the, the nasal inhalers and medicines, these are you know the, whatever Allah condition He puts a servant in, they have to take the remedy that's available to them. The effect of the breath that we're talking about is the, the smoking and burning either through cold smoke or fire smoke. Means anything that you do to affect the lungs, you're going to affect the ability of a Divine Grace to dress the lungs. So shaitan is, is after the lungs of people, why? Because it's the tree of bounty, the lot, lot tree, the, the, the tree of the furthest bounty, boundary because it has such an immense power and symbolism of a Divine Breath. We talked about the tree of life. So that tree of life is within us, if we focus and begin to nourish it, every breath that comes in will be like a fire on your soul of Divine Power and Qudra. So the shaykhs actually use their breath to bring out energy. So that has a tremendous importance, you wouldn't want to smoke with it. And if they do a cold smoke where they're doing those, those vaping was even more dangerous because that chemical can go deeper when it's cold than when it's on fire. But both of them are to destroy the lungs and shaitan has targeted the, the lungs of people because he knows these teachings, he knows that, oh yeah that's right that, that we're all going for the lungs because that's where their source of power is going to illuminate their heart. So if you take out somebody's lungs and, and make the lungs to be dirty, do you think they're going to have a clean heart? No, if you put tar and nicotine and shaitan's progeny inside your lungs, you every breath they're coming into your heart. So if you destroy the lungs of people, they have no heart. So that's what shaitan wants is to take the heart of these people out. So how he does that? By going after their lungs. So that's the danger that, that these people are doing. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa when doing our zikr and our thoughts are drifting towards dunya and waswas become stronger, should we stop and start over or should we just continue? No, you have to, that's the hard part is that when you're doing your meditation you're not supposed to stop. You stop on the reverse, not on when it's bad. You have to keep continuing to make the connection because shaitan is blocking the connection. When you stop is when you feel like you're in ecstasy. Like, oh I'm getting jubbas, I'm flying through the heavens, this is oh, so great, I'm like hallucinating now, stop your meditation. Because shaitan now is playing with your, your, your coordinates, this is not about hallucinating. And then you stop and you know recalibrate yourself, reconnect that I'm nothing, I don't want anything, I just want to reach an ocean of power and visualize that you're in the presence of the shaykh, visualize that you're in an in a ocean of power. And again recalibrate to feel energy, and I just want to feel energy, I don't want to sit here and hallucinate about who I think I am. So that's not important, 
What's important is to feel the energy. So once you begin to feel the energy radiating and every zikr is bringing more energy in, you begin to heat up then keep going, keep going. But if it now become hallucinations, I'm seeing this, I got this, these gifts are coming to me, stop that. So then you stop that meditation at that time, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Is it valuable to do the madad in the salawat book as well as the prescribed madad al haqq in the meditation instructions during our personal connection and before daily awrad? Yeah, the madad al haqq is, is in one form. We have that in our meditation book. The, the timeless reality has the, the detail on making the full madad on how to make the madad of the shaykhs. So that to recite the madad of the shaykhs and then sit to, to make the madad with the shaykh asking to be in the presence of the shaykh and then making your connection inshaAllah uh, as- and reciting the names of the Nashbandi shaykhs inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam uh, Say, what about the reality of anti anxiety drugs and the claim that they never leave the body, the brain. Is this a jinn attached to the person permanently? Anti-anxiety drugs, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I don't… I think that uh, anytime we talk about medicine that it's important to follow your doctor's recommendations. So we don't want to go into, you know, negating a medicine because Every Everybody who's prescribed a medicine wants to negate the medicine so they don't have to take the medicine. But the main thing is that whatever condition Allah puts us in, then that's the, the condition that we're in and it becomes a handicap for us that we have to work through it. So these medicines whatever they are, whatever can be, be homeopathic, whatever can be of a natural healing, whatever can be of a of a good and then the medicines that are recommended by the doctors then those medicines are to be taken. So that, that's a condition and uh, whatever condition Allah puts us in then we have to do the best with what's been given to us. When the person then wears their ta'weez, their keep their wudu, then alhamdulillah they, they, they go through the best that they can with the condition that Allah has put them into. But these conditions that we talked about before that are based on faith that, oh I'm going to run out and get this and this is going to protect me. No, nothing protects you but Allah So those are different things when people want to scare people to do this and to do that out of fear, that's, that's what Prophet described about Dajjal. Dajjal is going to come and tell everybody that the fear and have this fear and I have a remedy for you. And then Prophet described that remedy is, uh, is hell. And then he's going to tell that if you don't do this you're going to go to hell. So that when he says, Dajjal says hell it's paradise. When he tells you relief and paradise it's hell. So those are the situations that are opening upon the earth now that they're making people to fear and say, come to us we have a remedy. Say, no my remedy is in Allah and what Allah gave me from my shaykhs and guidance and the things that I have to do. But uh, taking heart medicine, diabetes medicine, some uh, mental medicines for, for, for psychiatric difficulties, that's something different. That's a condition Allah puts us in and Allah gives us a remedy inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. How to balance zero point energy about having no desires in dunya, professional and family life? Mm, this is the same one from last night <laughs> who brought this point of zero point. And then we talked about that last night that that concept of, of zero point is when the dunya desire is dropping. So you do it. It's not that they don't have dunya, so these are, you know, that's why I say people whom are practicing and actually putting this into practice, they understand this. When people are listening to these talks like it's a philosophy, then we become like philosophy course where we're making all sorts of analogies. 
The one who lives it understands what the shaykh is talking about. Everybody has to work, everybody has to have a home and make their car payments. The, the person whom loves their work so much that they want to be the entire CEO of the corporation and they want… they can't wait to, to work there for 30 years to get their pension, maybe that's a little bit too much love for dunya. But to work hard so you can make your house payment, car payments and put your children through school is mandatory. So you do it but you're not putting your heart that, oh they're gonna give me a pension. I'm going to be like the top of the company, I'm going to inherit the company, I'm going to buy all the shares of this company. That's what they're talking about, that your, your heart, you're a servant to that company, you're a servant to that desire. And Sayyidina Omar Farooq described that, no, the dunya should be your servant, not you be servant and abd for dunya but let the dunya be abd of you. So the one whom is strong with Allah the dunya is apt, what do you need? We bring it for you and things come to the shaykhs. So they're teaching the same thing is that you fulfill what Allah wants, fulfill what Prophet wants and know that you're going to use this dunya and its social media and all of these satanic traps, you're going to use it for akhirah so that it's under your feet not you're under its feet. So work hard, give big donations, support the mawlid, support the water wells, do all these projects. If the, if the group had a whole bunch of people with absolutely no jobs, well there would be no way to feed anyone on the street because we'd have to feed all of our people. It's not that, Naqshbandiya is very successful, all our gentlemen have you know top uh, successful lives, homes and everything. It's about the strong struggle, strong practices. And at the same time everything of dunya is under their feet, they don't bring it into their heart. Not in their heart, they're not trying to sort of conquer the earth but they're trying to conquer the heavens. That Allah be happy with them, that everything comes, they want to spend it for akhirah, they want to do it to, to, to show their love for Sayyidina Muhammad And that is, a, is a, an honourable characteristic. And Prophet described that many of those, those whom their, their sustenance is strong, their ability is, is great and they are great supporters of the way. And that was the example of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq which were top-notch uh, merchants. And Sayyidina Umar al Farooq, Jami al-Qur'an al-Majeed and uh, Sayyidina Usman al-Qani all the holy companions they were top-notch merchants and, and tradesmen and, and they were forming an entire nation based on their acumen and their ability to understand and, and the wealth that they had in which to achieve the nation and to, to start the nation of Islam. So they are the exemplars that everybody work hard and to achieve good and not to let it to enter in their heart like a poison in which they get so mesmerized by it and leave it. When it's under their feet and they are in command then alhamdulillah Allah dress it and bless it and make it to be very prosperous and as a result they are the big supporters that support the mawlid, support the events, support the orphanages, support the, the programs, the centers, the, all of these are achieved by extremely generous people who have immense love, immense love and uh, that control over their heart that it doesn't enter into their heart. So alhamdulillah these are, these are noble characteristics in which Naqshbandiya exemplifies the ability to have the dunya desire under their feet and not in their heart, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. This question has been asked many times, uh, is there an element on the periodic table related to Karbala? Element on the periodic table <clears throat> related to Karbala. I have, no, I, I have not the thought of that, I can't say no because it's not something any, anything has come to me. That what from the periodic table and how are you making reference to it? Then and why, why it's reference to Karbala? Because the periodic table is, is, a, is a table of, of elements. So don't, don't, I don't 
maybe the person is meditating on something, so I'm, I'm not getting. Why don't you tell us which element so that I can understand where you're coming from and why are you linking it to Karbala? So mercury has to do with shaitan and the toxicity, oxygen has to do with our breath, carbon has to do with our dunya existence. So our, our elemental understanding is, is a one way of a universal description still in the level of dunya not in the level of akhirah. So alien nations, they don't describe you as a human. And they don't describe you as, oh he's a tall, handsome, six foot white guy. They're going to describe you based on your elements. That this is a carbon creature because his main element is carbon or maybe someone else on another planet their main element, element may be nitrogen or silica. So the jinn their main element is not carbon, it's silica and there's a similarity between silica and carbon. So somebody was asking and I think one of my kids was asking that, that uh, the jinn race is it silica based? And I said, yeah, as a matter of fact their, their home and residence is based on silica. And then the similarity of the silica element to carbon element. So depends on what science and what the person is meditating and what's coming to their heart then Allah expands that heart and its understanding and its point of reference that each of the elements have a significance but you have to focus on and, and to, to open up its understanding that there are noble gases, nine noble gases. <coughs> huh? Are there nine noble gases? So we have nobody who <laughs> does chemistry in, in the school, yeah, in the group, yeah. So he, he, the elements, they, they have significance, so yeah, it's a matter of focusing on, on the gases, the, the elements and like we said mercury is symbolic of shaitan and its toxicity and that uh, yeah, small amounts can kill you and poison you and that he's a, he's a mercury and anything that he puts he makes it to be toxic. So that, that has… Uh, these elements have uh, different realities and, and different understandings. With titanium then inshaAllah we look into it. And iron, Imam Mahdi salam has to do with iron, hadith. And uh, the realities of hadith and uh, 57 I think is in Qur'an and Allah gives the, the number of elements by the, the, the number of the surah. So yeah, the, the, the periodic table has a significance but it requires the people to focus on that and that their heart Allah expand its understandings. And that Sayyidina Mahdi has to do with iron and the importance of iron. Iron is an element that cannot be made on earth. So it comes from, from the heavens, as a result it's brought onto the earth and we find it as an essential element within the earth. But the secret of iron that it, it has such a immense amount of power within the atom of iron. So dunya uses it to explode. So they make their explosive devices from iron because there's such an immense force to make an atom of iron that we cannot make it on dunya. So as a result they try to separated by the force they use to break the atom it releases exponential amount of force out. That's why it's so destructive in dunya. But it's symbolic of the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi Salam. it's something that is not made from dunya but it's coming on to dunya. Means the immensity of its power and the immensity of, of its reality. And that uh, the 57th surah then has to do immense reality of the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi So each of the elements have a, a reality and inshaAllah Allah give more understanding for that. So the elements have understandings of, of you know different creatures, different things, different events and if you wanted to universally describe creatures you would describe them by their elemental structure not the shik the form. So we are of a carbon-based creature and we, s we have a certain amount of oxygen within our system. Others may have a higher element of nitrogen 
They say in the dinosaurs when everything was huge and big, the only reason they could be big was the level of nitrogen in the air was more. Those huge creatures wouldn't grow now with the level of oxygen that we have in our atmosphere. So it means all of these elements will then show something that's happening or creatures that are existing on that plane. So the creatures that exist on Mars, they probably have different forms, different structures for the location in which they're existing, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzatam wa yasifu wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.